Okay, so we're talking today about what to consider before acquiring a rabbit, and mm -hmm. I say acquiring rather than buying because many people buy rabbits from stores not realizing that you can adopt them from shelters or rescue groups. A uh, really important thing to know because there are many, many rabbits who need homes that are available in your local shelter or rescue group. As you adopted. I read, my first yeah. rabbit I bought in a pet shop, and they had not all knowing. the information they had for bunnies was wrong. Yeah. So that's also, we can get to talk about that later. And your second rabbit. I adopted from From, from House you. Rabbit Society, mm -hmm. yeah. And Amy's rabbit is a beautiful rabbit, now age 12, 12 we think, about 12 years mm -hmm. old. So uh, what do you need to think about before you get a rabbit? A main thing to think about is how much space you have in your home for the rabbit. Not only for cages, which should be generous in size, we recommend at least four times the body length of the rabbit when he's stretched out, but also space to exercise the rabbit outside the cage. You will need a rabbit-proofed area, and we're doing another video on rabbit proofing, so you'll have information about that. But you'll need a nice, safe area to exercise the rabbit in where he can't chew things that will hurt him or get him in trouble. And you need a place that has traction. If you have bare floors, the rabbit will never run the way he will when he has traction. And that's why we like to show these rugs. These are nice cotton washable rugs that you can buy in lots of different stores mm -hmm. and put them on top of your other rugs or on top of wood floors. If they slide on your wood floors, you want to get a non-skid piece of rubber. You can get these in the dishware section of almost any home goods store. Keep the rugs from sliding around, give the rabbits traction. Because otherwise, if they don't, they can. their backs are so fragile yeah. that they could break their backs. They can skid and yeah. hurt themselves when they're their running. Spines, yeah. right. Another thing to think about is, do you have kids? And a lot of people think of rabbits as low-maintenance starter pets for kids or as animated stuffed toys, and they're really not. These are very fragile animals, and they're prey animals, which means they're everybody else's lunch in nature. These are animals that are very easily frightened, and kids are naturally exuberant and spontaneous and all those wonderful things, but that's not good for a prey animal. It, it makes them feel unsafe and unstable. So, so get you, rid of your kids. <laughs> get rid of your kids. Wait until your kids are a little bit older rather than getting rabbits for young kids. That's a big consideration before you acquire a rabbit. Mm -hmm. Another one is the amount of time you have to spend. A lot of people think that because you don't have to walk rabbits the way you walk dogs, that it's no serious time expenditure. Don't. Talk to me about time expenditure. Right, well, yeah. You, you spend a significant amount of time with your rabbit every day. Keep it down, keep it down. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm massaging. lucky, I'm home a lot. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's something people need to understand, though. And another consideration is money. Uh, rabbits don't get, like, rabies vaccines and other vaccines that some other animals get that are common pets but um, they require veterinary care, and the veterinary care for rabbits is often more expensive than vet care for dogs and cats. And a lot of people think they're getting a low budget pet when they get a rabbit, and it's not low budget. Here in the New York area, for example, just to spay or neuter a rabbit, the cost can range into several hundreds of dollars. Uh, and it's very hard to find low cost alternatives because you can't get the kind of certificates for rabbits that you can for dogs and cats that are subsidized by tax money. So veterinary care is a major consideration. If you don't have the money to take good care of your rabbit at a good veterinarian, then you might want to wait a while until your budget changes. Or it's also if you have other pets, a cat or a dog, they don't always yeah. get along. I That's mean, right. Yeah, other pets. Sometimes they do. Rabbits can get along with gentle dogs mm -hmm. and, and non-feral cats. But the kind of dog breed that's that's bred like Jack Russell's, bred to hunt small prey, right. um, you want to be really careful about combining rabbits with those. Generally, if you have other pets and they're dogs like, I'd say, German Shepherd mixes or Retriever mixes, those generally tend to be good with rabbits. But you have to do right. the introductions very carefully. Or taxidermy. Um, and or also taxidermy. Uh, <laughs> shopping. You know, vegetables. And, and you yep. know, it takes a lot. The it's, hay, you got to keep the hay coming to your house. Yep. And you really do need a lot of space for these creatures. Yeah, it's and it's money. It's it's not, mm -hmm. just a, it's not just a cheap pet. The other thing, and this is something you're an expert on at this point, you have to remember if you're going on vacation or traveling for work, which Amy does extensively, you have to get rabbit care. You can't yeah. leave these animals overnight by themselves because if they stop eating for 12 hours or longer, you could have a veterinary emergency on your hand with nobody to notice that there's anything wrong. So right. what do you do when you travel? Um, well, usually I have people who are familiar with rabbits. I'm lucky they'll stay in my apartment and, yeah. and keep an eye on her. Yeah, so Which is they, the best thing. If, right. yeah, if you can get somebody to stay in your home, that's great. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can board rabbits at a veterinary right. office, Which but that expensive can too. be very expensive. And you want to inspect the cage in advance. It might be a tiny cage, and it might be right next to an area where dogs are barking loudly, which is really scary for rabbits. Mm -hmm. So that's a consideration. And then, believe it or not, your personality is a consideration. If you have the kind of personality where you can 
can really enjoy watching an animal, taking your time with the animal, letting the animal take its time with you. That's very different from the kind of personality that wants to be handling and picking up and on the animal all the time and wants the animal to respond in certain ways. These are not dogs. And although they're very bright and very trainable, they're not going to behave the way a dog behaves. You come here, Rover, come here, Rover. You know, that might frighten a rabbit. And if you have the kind of personality that wants an animal that will be trying to please you, this might not be the best choice for you. Uh, rabbits are, are generally animals for people who enjoy observing as much as they enjoy handling. And that matters a lot. Um, then your landlord is a big consideration. Mm -hmm, Some mm -hmm. people, we get a lot of rabbits who end up in shelters because the person didn't realize that the landlord didn't want pets or the person got pets in spite of the fact that the landlord didn't want them and trying to hide them and it doesn't work for a long period of time. So you got to make sure that your landlord is okay with pets. If you have allergies, that's another consideration. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who have dog and cat allergies who are not allergic to rabbits. Right, but then here. There are people who are allergic to rabbits that aren't allergic to dogs and cats. So. You know, you got to consider allergies, and if you have the opportunity to spend a little time with a friend's rabbit or in a shelter or mm -hmm. with a rescue group around a bunch of rabbits to make sure that you're not allergic, that would be helpful. Because if you yeah. adopt a rabbit and you are allergic, the rabbit's going to lose his home. Um, or you're going to end up at an allergist with expensive shots and, you know, <laughs> something to consider is more right. money. So, um, the final consideration is rabbit proofing. When you have a rabbit, you have to make adjustments to your home. You have to make adjustments to your home. These are animals who chew by nature. And if you're uncomfortable with having your furniture sampled or having little corners torn off your books or having your rug nibbled on or having your clothing nibbled on, a rabbit is definitely not the right animal. Or if you're a smoker, you know, <laughs> just because That's right. they're breathing. These right. rabbits, these animals are used for respiratory studies. They have very delicate lungs and if you smoke in your home and you're going to fill their lungs with cigarette smoke, that's another thing to consider. Right. So, which isn't to say that you can't make adjustments in any of these things. You probably can. But you just may, know, right. Yeah, just know about it. You may be able, for example, with your landlord, you may be able to, to negotiate paying a pet fee against your rent and you know your landlord may be fine with that as long as there's no damage to the property you'll get your pet fee back so there's ways to negotiate around a lot of these things but these are what you should be aware of before you take a rabbit into your home